This is ghost gear. Fishing gear lost from vessels. Abandoned, it drifts on ocean currents. A staggering 640,000 tons of fishing gear enters the world's seas each year. Made of metal, strong plastics and synthetic fibre, it doesn't degrade in the ocean environment. Of all forms of ghost gear, fishing nets are widely considered to be the most harmful. Once lost, they continue to entangle, suffocate and kill marine life indiscriminately until removed. The Maldives is an ocean sanctuary of pristine habitats and home to a myriad marine species. For thousands of years, its national fishing fleet has only used environmentally sustainable pole and line and hand line fishing methods, and commercial net fishing is illegal in Maldivian waters. Despite this, ghost nets have become a serious threat to the marine environment here. This ghost gear does not belong to Maldivian fisheries they belong to fisheries that are operating in the Indian Ocean. About 35% of the nets that we encounter have sea turtles entangled in them. The injuries are catastrophic. Small lacerations on the skin, deep lacerations around the neck, and also complete amputations of flippers. We're finding very little change in the number of sea turtles we're finding entangled in ghost gear Larger scale fisheries certainly need to be held more accountable for the amount of gear that's being lost and also the amount of gear that's being deployed in our oceans surrounding the Maldives. This is why the International Pole and Line Foundation and the Olive Ridley Project partnered to tackle the problem. Their innovative project sought to utilise the position of Maldivian fishers to collect ghost gear at sea, shortening its lifespan in the ocean and its collateral environmental damage. For this, their proposal received the inaugural Joanna Tool Ghost Gear Solutions Award. The fundamental aim of the project was to show that fisheries can remove more plastics and fishing gear from the ocean than they lose through their own operations, setting a new standard for best performance in the sector. By utilising IPNLF's relationships with the Maldivian fishers and the Olive Ridley Project's best practices for turtle disentanglement, they developed an at-sea ghost gear collection program to ensure the safe release of entangled animals. Our project took place working with 12 vessels from Gamanofishi Island, where IPNLF have built strong, cooperative relationships with local fishers since 2012. During ghost gear collection, fishers were to note the location of collection and bring ghost gear aboard to be dismantled or stored before being taken back to shore. Back on land, Ghost gear was weighed, recorded, and then either responsibly recycled or distributed among the community to be upcycled. By the end of this project, these vessels retrieved many times more ghost gear by weight than they lost through their own fishing operations. In fact, the amount of gear collected by these vessels is enough to offset gear loss contributions of almost half of the national Maldivian fleet, almost 350 vessels demonstrating the scale of the impact that can be had by a small fraction of fishers. Another important aspect of the project was to test the possibility of reusing and upcycling the collected ghost gear. Across all the gear that was collected, more than half was repurposed as plant pots for locals and even created chairs for community use. Any gear that couldn't be upcycled due to severe degradation or biofouling was recycled through a local waste management system. The success of ghost gear retrieval and repurposing in this project challenges the current industry practices of what effective plastic waste management can be. We now have a better understanding of ghost gear around the Maldives from which we can hold the worst performing areas of the fishing industry to greater account for their negligent marine pollution. Our project pioneers practical solutions to the issue of ghost gear removal and ghost gear repurposing and shows that fisheries can aspire to remove more ghost gear from the ocean than they lose through their own operations. Through actions on the water, our fishermen have demonstrated how tuna supply chains can become less wasteful and have a bigger impact on ocean plastic, even becoming plastic positive. Perhaps the greatest legacy of IPNLF's ghost gear project is in establishing a replicable model one that can be scaled globally and provides economic possibilities for local people through the products they upcycle. 
Having taken inspiration from the project, IPNLF now aspires to reduce the plastic footprint of the fisheries it works with, challenging them to remove ghost gear from the ocean with the goal of becoming plastic neutral by 2025. Come and join us on this journey as we turn the tide on ghost gear. <laughs>